by 75, we had revived our internal network. Uh, now, this is the one I used in 76, when the, the chance came to recruit the 28, uh, partly from here, partly from Nairobi. Uh, and now we are back in full business. So when we were trying to infiltrate them back, that's when I made, I mean, I made the mistake of attacking Tanzania. And instead of continuing with the clandestine, we now went open. Muzir then said, okay, he removed some of us. Ivan, General Ivan now, and some other person to come to Uganda for some missions. Uh, the, 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 our leader thought he needed some people inside Uganda. And I was one of the five that were selected. And uh, by April of 1977, 78. So this is December 77, then uh, about four months. Yeah. Seven, yeah, that's a year. And then uh, by, by April. I managed to be infiltrated back into Uganda. Ida means Uganda. And it's a short while after that that he attacks Tanzania and then the war to throw him out comes through. And all that time I was always in Ida means Uganda behind enemy lines. But I had a way, a method to communicate to the Islam, uh, answer questions, assignments, report on assignments. Yeah. Because of the behavior of this regime, various groups, both inside and outside the country, have been doing their very best to remove the regime. They have been working in isolation and independently. For the purpose of this conference we have just concluded here in Moshi was to bring all these forces together and work as a united front. So the first thing we did was to form the Uganda National Liberation Front. When Amin left, there was this UNRF Uganda National Liberation Front that was formed largely in Nairobi and went and united with others to come with the Rure and Tanzanians and from NASA and, and take power. But they came as factions with hardly anything in common. So when they came here, they were continuously fighting each other. Yes, those who were the old factions came back the Catholic faction, the Protestant faction, the Westerners faction, the Northerners, the Easterners, the educated, the what, everybody, they, they, they broke into pieces. For NASA, the Front of National Salvation had been operational throughout much of the 1970s, led by Yoweri Museveni. In 1979, For NASA joined Chikosi Malum and other groups to create a united front, the Uganda National Liberation Front whose military wing was the Uganda National Liberation Army. So all these fighters from Kikosi Marum and from NASA had been decided we are merged, uh, we are documented, given service numbers, pictures, fingerprints, be made soldiers of the new army, Uganda National Liberation Army. Uh, so my unit was, uh, went to Kabamba. Uh, I think General Saleh, Red Army was in there. Lots of uh, people, others were in Mubende. That's how UNLA was formed. And uh, yeah, but we could see, I could see that uh, there is problems coming in future. Uh, because a lot of uh, Fronasa fighters uh, we are being ejected, just rejected, because they are either too short, they are not six foot, 
Say, but if a man fought from Kagera to Koboko, how can he be unfit? But uh, the, the majority of the documentation teams were made up mainly of our brothers from Kikosi Malum, formerly Uganda Army. Because these are the ones who had been in the army before, so they had all these jobs. We didn't know anything. And um, there was already bad blood, you could see. We all occupied West Nile and neighbors. I was in Koboko. Ivan was in a road going to Sudan. And then Usale was part of the Lodonga. So we, and then that was the Funasa force. Then there was another force of Kikosi Malum. That one fallen no Uto Joka no Obote, the sort of UPC. They are purely for Obote. And then there was Tazen and Hami. You can see that Katogo. The discipline became a problem there. I want the world to understand this. The people of Uganda, the population, did not start violence. I was not a soldier, I was an intellectual. Why did I become a soldier? I became a soldier to defend myself and my people against state-inspired violence. It was a different country we came back to. It had been really destroyed. Many people had died. The other homes which were not destroyed had been overrun and really looked like wilderness. The roads were unpassable. There was no water in Kampala. There were, the electricity would come and go. The, it was a totally destroyed economy and the country. So that was uh, Uganda at the end of the 70s, 1979. It was in 1980, early 1980. They said we are going to bring back the parties. For us, we said these parties cannot work. So many young people uh, came together. Fortunately, we had a, a, a leader. <clears throat> One of the members of the, of the military commission, President Museven, th that time he was not a president, he was vice chairman of the military commission, agreed with, most people said that we need, we still should remain in a united front, which was the NRM. No, uh, you, no, UNRF. But now that UNRF had collapsed, we had to look for another vehicle to fight for, the, to keep this unity. So that's how UPM came. I remember um, campaigns started. Campaigns, um, there was DP, yes. There was DP, there was UPC, that's what I used to hear. Then now UPM came up, and I was in S S S3 then. And I remember I was chosen to be chair of UPM in my school, because I just remember knowing that UPC was for Protestants, DP was for, Cath uh, for Catholics, and then uh, these people are coming and they are saying UPM, UPM, and it was talking about non-denominational you know, denominational, uh, politics, uh, politics of uniting people. And it made so much sense. I was like, that's it. We are talking of principled unity. These were new terms introduced by the president and the, the young team that came that time. 
principle of unity was a, a new concept in politics. Can't we unite again uh, around principles instead of uniting around Banyan Kore and Bachiga and Catholics? So principle of unity was very important. Two, can we democratize instruments of coercion? This is the army, the police, the intelligence. Previously, <coughs> if an army came, it was either for Nubians, it was either for Acholis or Langis or so here, the president said, no, we can strive to get an army that is balanced. So that's to democratize instruments of coercion. That those, those two were very attractive. Principle of unity and democratic instruments of coercion. I have justice for forming a new party is that we want to solve the missing link. Where is the missing link? What's wrong with Uganda? Uh, there, there's that question. What's wrong with you, Ugandans? You're always in crisis. You're always in trouble. What's wrong with you? Chichi. So we want to answer that question. UPM also believes that ultimately, the people, the population, are the ultimate guarantors of their own freedom. We went around, we campaigned, we talked about elections and changing our country and giving it hope for tomorrow and but, uh, the constituencies had, had been changed somewhat and and so we were going to new areas we didn't even know that had become part of the constituency that, that was in 1980, Uganda held its first national election since 1962. Unfortunately, the election processes were marred from the start. UPC members were appointed to the Electoral Commission and engaged in gerrymandering. The government intimidated candidates and there was no secrecy at the ballot. The declaration of results was taken over by the UPC's Paolo Mwanga, who changed them to give his party a false victory. Now there is a big election in end of 80. Yeah. And we saw the campaigns. As I mentioned earlier, I was uh, in the personnel department at uh, headquarters. Uh, I lived uh, not far from here. I was staying with my brother, Peter Nkore. He was an engineer with uh, Uganda Railways, and he had a home just before Luzira town. Uh, so I lived there and went to Republic House to work every morning, came back in the evening. But during the campaign, the violence was just too bad. If party X, members of party X, members of party Y, from their campaign rallies, if they met, there would be a big fight. People would get badly injured. I don't know how many died, but it was an everyday occurrence everywhere. And when, until we finished the campaign and then the elections actually came and we did the elections and we waited for results, we waited for results, we waited for results. And when they came, they were really unreal. Come the day of the balloting itself, uh, it, it is all very well documented uh, how, how this thing was geared and skewered uh, um, you know, instead of the returning officers, somebody high up somewhere decided to be the returning officer. And uh, if you do this, there will be a fine, you'll go to prison. Everything changed. So uh, it was ugly. And uh, we knew there was going to be trouble. What we were telling you, these people, why don't you organize elections, free elections, and people decide? You put your point of view, they put theirs, and then they decide. Don't try to, 
to intimidate, don't try to manipulate, don't try to cheat. Let the people decide. That's when you were started saying that he was going to the bush. And of course at that time that sounded like he don't know what he's talking about. And for me I wasn't ready to go into exile again. I was prepared to go to the remotest area in Yavshuz and stay there, hoping that nobody would know where I, I am. Seven then was always questioning, you people, we have invested so much already in this military was in defeating Idi Amin. Now you want to take us back to sectarian politics. If you continue and you cheat, we shall go back to the bush where we have been. And these people thought this was a joke. But indeed, after that, we went back to the bush. The 28, the ones who attacked Kawamba, 27, they were actually 43, but the ones with the guns were 27. These were mainly the bodyguards who were with me at, at, at Kololo and Makindi. Many of the other people came later because operationally they were not, couldn't be near me uh, because they had been dispersed. UPC had dispersed them, thinking that that was a, a way to, 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 to block us. In 1981, you took to the bush with 27 other men with the aim of overthrowing the government of Milton Obote. On the face of it, a difficult, if not impossible task. Do you think of yourself as a gambler? No, there was no gambling in the, in the whole situation. We studied the, the, the balance of uh, forces. We studied the dynamics of the situation. We knew that although we, were, we had 27 armed people, but we represented millions of potential soldiers these thousands here, they were all, uh, they were all civilians, all peasants. Many of them were peasants. So although the 27 armed people uh, were a small number, they represented a huge force of uh, potential soldiers. First off, when did you join the NRA? I joined the NRA on, in 1981. And why did you join the NRA? I joined the NRA because of a number of reasons. One, the conditions at that time in the barracks where I was staying were, no, were intolerable and even in the country over. Because, for example, in the barracks where I was staying in Makindi, I, I, I witnessed a number of people, innocent people, who were killed there, who were always being tortured in the army cells. And even my fellow Nani army people, army men, were killed there. Those who, were, who appeared to UPC royalists as sympathizers of other political parties. From the time of Fanasa to NRA, you were always in, a, in the position of David against Goliath. 
So what made you press on? Mm? What made you continue? Because you were always fighting a much bigger foe. What would it not have been easier and safer for you to do nothing? What else can we do if, uh, if you have got a government which has closed off all other channels of uh, peaceful change? What else would we do except to surrender, to resign ourselves to slavery? And we couldn't do that as long as the people were willing. Because this is their own war. The people are actually the ones who, who urged us on to fight. If we do not have this support, we would never have started such a war. So it is to the people's benefit themselves. And the fact that they have been, bo they have been able to bear this suffering, as you have seen, is a testimony to, to the fact that this is their own war. These people are just using us. We are the instruments. If we had not started the war, we would have been declared traitors. Because as long as we were fighting, we were, we were satisfied, more satisfied than if we were not fighting. Uh, because it would be traitors. You would feel that I am a traitor. This person is doing bad things. I should be able to, which I should not accept, but I am accepting it because I want a comfortable life. That one we couldn't do. How would you describe the sort of war that the NRA is fighting at the moment from a military point of view? It is a protracted people's war of the same type as we are fought in some other countries, like China, for instance, uh, and even other countries of the West, like, uh, like America, United States itself. Actually, they are, they are among the forerunners of this type of fight, fighting. George Washington, when he organized uh, the American uh, settlers, to fight against the, the army of, of George the Third, I think it was George the Third, was it? Uh, but the 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 common characteristic is that uh, uh, a popular cause, which is very popular, but backed by initially irregular forces, forces which are not regular armies, and which which are not as armed as the establishment army, uh, by using uh, guerrilla tactics, eventually they build up enough strength to overwhelm the enemy. So this army is, this, this war is of the same category as the ones of Washington in America. I think there was also the war in Spain against Napoleon, when Napoleon was uh, invading Europe. I think there was a people's war of this type, Mao Tung, and uh, many other, uh, other wars in uh, Vietnam and uh, in Southern Africa and so on. In your opinion, are conditions in Uganda today under President Aboti worse than they were under the regime of Idi Amin? Very much so. They are very much worse than they were under Amin. Because under Amin, first of all, Idi Amin was not killing uh, people outside the intellectual class. He used to kill only the, the, the elite, elements from the elite who were threatening his position. Or sometimes uh, over rivalry, over business, things like that. But he never taxed the peasantry. But Aboti is killing everybody the peasants, the working class, young, young children. Uh, so on the side of human rights, um, the repression of Amin did not go as deeply as the repression of Obote. Can you tell us exactly what happened from the morning mm. when he got up mm. to the when he found his mother dead? Just yeah. explain to us the whole thing that happened that day. Okay. That's why it is here. Ikiendo <laughs> She's in her cover, in her hiding place. Why? Why she? Why she? Why she? Why she? 
incise a tu Ote geza si Wako tutaru wachi utoveri yu mpeka Wachi uvera mkapu Mpeka sigiai sisobora yu Wachi Naduka mu She ran away She ran away from bullets From? Bullets from Whose bullets is she scared of? I'm a first of the Agani Ndiago bote kubanga buwansanga Sarabu says She is running away from bote's soldiers and police because if he finds her there, he will slaughter. Has has Abote's police and soldiers killed many of her friends and villagers? Very, basi kwa bantu wao, kwa mukutundo. E e kesi bara bande sano mwana angwa miezi mukaga. They they have killed many, including her child of six months. Her child of six months. Yes. How did they do that? Can I ask her? Very very sorry. How bati kula bati ya, umana bamba sanga wakumu. Banzi jawa kwa wange, abajasi le, ibande tawa na ndege, mtu sare na bafu loka kuku. Oh, hata bado, umana. Nini zige? Umana ni mule kaya kire juu ya mwenye sisi. Ne ba muta. Umana yafu, na bazaeta kwa mwenye ba bata, ndiyo aliwe ni mule. That she was arrested by Obote soldiers, taken to a detached UNRA detached at Ndege, and that's where she escaped from. The child stayed there, was killed together with her parents. And when was this? D. Kinana Mugu. 1981. Ah, the bush life was tough. Tough in a sense that, uh, of course, we are living under harsh conditions, uh, living in the bush, uh, being attacked and having to shift uh, day by day, having to do, spend days without food, depending on the situation. Uh, getting uh, injuries and losses sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, losing life because there were no medicine. Uh, it was rough that, in that sense, but happy in the sense that we were free uh, to be together and plan to do something about the bad situation in our country. So we are happy would be planning, would be singing, would be studying, discussing. So to that extent, it was sweet and sour. Now, what's your job with the NRA? My job has been mainly in the deliverance of medical services, both to the soldiers of NRA and to the population around our areas of operation. And you run um, the medical facilities for the mobile brigade of the NRA? That's right. What sort of work does that entail? It entails uh, both uh, the surgical procedures, uh, treating casualties from gunshot wounds or shrapnels, and uh, also treating the medical ailments uh, like malaria, diarrheal diseases, hookworm infestations, and, uh, and so on. And this obviously takes quite a bit of medicine and instruments and so on to, to be able to carry out this work. That's right. Where do you get your instruments and medicine? We raid the government hospitals and pick all the drugs and instruments we need. And uh, they are quite sufficient. They are our quota master. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any other major problems working in the bush? What about the, the purely the field hygiene? If you want to operate on someone, you don't have a hospital here? Oh yes, we have uh, definite uh, problems with hygiene. Uh, even our theatres uh, have to operate in, in uh, quite septic conditions uh, because we have no sterilizers, we have no refrigerators, uh, so our conditions are really septic. Uh, we also have problems of hygiene, uh, fighting with the population to use uh, petra trains. Uh, even the soldiers, but we have been carrying out a campaign and uh, it seems to be working. And ever since she's been living here? But this is the first year since that time she has lived here and she doesn't know what happened to the rest of her child children. She's a very strong lady. What does she think will happen in the future? She doesn't know, but she hopes for success. What does she think of Museven? Museven is a good 
She prays for him. Is he better than a booty? Omagara nyo kusenga ubote. Shenga si muagara te senga andi na emus. But if she didn't like him, she wouldn't be with him in the bush. Thank you.